Uh, but today, this session will be more about uh, uh, how you can uh, put the security into the Hadoop cluster, what all things you need to do. Uh, so, uh, no issues. If you have any question there, please drop your drop your questions into this questions window. I will be answering the questions along the way. You don't need to really raise the hands. And uh, whatever queries are there uh, at the end of the session, I'll try my best to resolve all of them. Okay. So you can drop your queries directly into this questions window. Okay. You're all muted right now, guys. So uh, don't worry that uh, I mean it's it's not really. Uh, you, you just need to drop your queries into the questions window. I'll take care of it. Okay, during the webinar. So uh, let's start our webinar uh, with the uh, advanced Hadoop uh, security in in Hadoop uh, advanced security in Hadoop cluster. Okay, so how we can put the security. So just to bring in uh, the agenda here, what are the objectives? Able to cover Saf's uh, session here. Uh, we're discussing a lot a bit uh, about the Hadoop cluster introduction. What are the recommend configurations, and then we'll be moving into the you know Hadoop security with the Kerberos uh, access control list, which which uh, HDFS provides, and the what are the demon, uh, Hadoop admin responsibilities with with the demonstration on security itself. Okay, so this this uh, webinar will be more inclined towards the security aspects of Hadoop. Okay, so I'll try my best to you know put it into the simple words as much as I can. Okay, so let's start, guys. Uh, Quickly, let let me cover what are the uh, you know Hadoop uh, core components. Okay, I hope that uh, it uh, you, you should be able to see the screen now. You should be able to see the presentation. Okay, that's good then. So let's quickly start it. Uh, so we have got two components of Hadoop. Uh, one is HDFS, another is uh, YARN. So HDFS is composed of two main components: uh, uh, name node and and data node. While there are other two core components of it, like you can have a secure standby name node. If you, if you have your previous webinars of Hadoop high availability, then you might have seen that you can have a, a, a standby name node, which will be working as a uh, standby node in case your active name node goes down. You can also have a secondary name node if you don't want to bring the high availability into the Hadoop cluster. That's totally up to you. Uh, from the YARN specific side, I've got two more components called resource manager and node manager. So name node uh, and data node, they are basically used for storing the data. So your metadata goes into the name node and your data, actual data goes into the data nodes. Resource manager and node manager are from the uh, jobs uh, perspective in which like your, whenever you submit the job into the Hadoop cluster, your uh, job first gets uh, submitted to the resource manager and resource manager brings the application master which is one per application. And this application is being created by the node manager by bringing in the resources for that particular uh, for, for that particular application model. so it's just a sort of a container which is being created by the node manager so if you if you talk about the a typical use case of a hadoop cluster okay uh, in a typical hadoop cluster use case you you'll see this kind of a uh, scenario where uh, you'll have a, a couple of uh, name nodes okay so you'll have a secondary name node, you'll have an active name node, spy name node, you'll also have data nodes over there. So, and you will be seeing that uh, most of the, um, I mean the memory will be high in the name node side because they are sort of a master nodes and they store all the metadata. And data will be having uh, the more hard disk because they're going to store the actual data in the form of blocks. So uh, in a Hadoop cluster, this is the typical use case that you will see, uh, I mean, either you'll have a standby name node or a secondary name node, or, uh, and you will have the high memory in the name node side, and uh, with the, I mean, all, everything redundant, I'll say, I'll say power, I'll say Ethernet cards, channel bonded, I'll say uh, hard disk drives uh, in the rated form. And in the data nodes, we'll have more hard disk, uh, which, which will be used to store the data in the form of blocks. So this is this is how we define our Hadoop cluster, the recommended configuration for our uh, slave nodes uh, in terms of uh, general configuration and uh, special configuration. So this configuration will be like more in towards the uh, uh, middle amount of uh, you know. Mid it's a, it's a medium sort of a storage as well as a RAM with the uh, with the proper I'll say uh, with the, with the uh, CPUs and in the special configuration it's very minimal configurations. So why we use the special configurations because generally in the 
generally a Hadoop cluster with more nodes perform better than one with fewer slightly faster nodes. The reason is uh, more the number of nodes the data is distributed, more data is distributed, uh, less the amount of pressure uh, for the mappers or the processing power on each node. So it's always good to have uh, more nodes. Might be it, it can be uh, slightly it can be uh, uh, slightly less configured. It, it should be it, it can be the capacity can be less for these slave nodes. That's totally uh, fine. Uh, uh, but yes, uh, it, it, if there are more nodes, then certainly it will be good to have a Hadoop cluster with, with more nodes itself, because it will be a lot of there will be a lot of, uh, you know uh, a distribution of data in the Hadoop cluster. So it, all in all, if I say, I mean, if you if you are defining your cluster, I mean, if you are if you are having just a, a Hadoop cluster with with the standalone node, it's it's just of a uh, POC time of cluster if it's a pseudo distributed mode just for the testing purposes on your single machines with the Hadoop distributed file system and and uh, uh, you know uh, and the map reduce and a fully distributed mode node cluster in which your Hadoop would be once distributed and run on the cluster of machines. Now suppose let's say if you're having more nodes okay it, it, it will not result in more shuffle the reason is I mean it depends upon the data as well so how your data is distributed and uh, the shuffle mechanism actually has, you know, in, if you talk about the internals of shuffling mechanism, you know, it, it might be possible that your data is only on the 10 nodes or 15 nodes, okay, there then uh, the amount of processing which will happen in this 15 nodes, it, it, it will be much, much less than if you're having like a 5 node cluster or 6 node cluster with more data on them. So what I'm trying to say is the shuffle can be more, but it will be more distributed. It will it will run in the less number of nodes, and sorry, it will be it will be done in the more number of nodes, and hence take uh, very less amount of time to process the data. So, uh, just a uh, one uh, case uh, can have can it can take more data, but uh, if for the mappers and reducer sorting mechanism, partitioning, uh, uh, combining will take very less amount of time in this case. So we need to take the whole. Architecture of map reduce if you if you talk about the uh, you know uh, more number of nodes in this case. So just for everyone, if you are not able to read, if you are not able to see the presentation, or if you are not able to hear me fine, I would request everyone to please rejoin the session, guys, because uh, everyone I think was joined already able to see the presentation as well as be fine. So. With this, guys, very basic part. Uh, let's understand what is security all about in in Hadoop cluster. So security is a very broad topic. Uh, if you talk about computer security, and access control is the area which is most relevant to Hadoop. So we'll be uh, focusing on authentication and authorization of a Hadoop cluster. Okay. So authentication is uh, confirming the identity of a participant. Okay, if, if the, the audience, if the user is trying to access the cluster, whether he is the one or not, that is confirming identity, which is typically done by checking the credentials like username and password. That's your uh, authentication. And authentication is more inclined towards determining whether the participant is allowed to perform an action or is the user authorized to uh, run that particular service to access the particular service, which is typically done by checking the access control list or checking the credentials that uh, he is uh, allowed to uh, access that particular web page or web page or service or name node or whatever. I mean that that can be okay. So if if we talk about Hadoop distributed file system support, so HDFS currently supports only file ownership and permissions. So this is very modest protection, okay. And user and group authentication can easily be subverted on the client size. Even unauthorized clients can impregnate the authorized user, and they can even access the uh, cluster. So it, it's mainly intended to guard, uh, like, against any accidental deletions or overrides. I mean, that that was was the major uh, uh, idea of bringing the you know default security into Hadoop cluster okay but with this 
there is a lot of uh, I mean demand that uh, how can we provide the strong authentication of both the clients and the servers. Tasks can be run under a job meters on account and how, how we actually ask the users to you know review their only own data so how we can restrict that users should not be allowed to delete the data how can we allow how can we say that okay multiple users are mapped to a particular directory how can we provide that kind of authentications to the user so if we talk about the Hadoop security considerations authentication authorization masking encryption integrity confidentiality all all are very much important I mean you you should have the SSL implementation in place, you should have the uh, encryption of the data in place, you should have the HTTP encryption in place, even the data at rest in HDFS, how can that be encrypted? Okay, so a lot of, uh, lot of banks, uh, you know, financial organizations, they try to encrypt the data already in HDFS, so how, how those things can be achieved in the Hadoop clusters? So, now, if, if we talk about the enhanced security that is done with the Carbros. Okay, in this particular session, we'll be talking about two important parts, which is how can we authenticate and how we can uh, uh, authorize the user by providing the access control list. So, Cavros is, uh, I mean, Hadoop Secure does not provide any encryption for data transmitted or encryption for data stored on disk. Okay, so what is Cavros actually? Cavros involves messages exchanged among three parties. Okay. So first is the client who is trying to access the cluster. The server which is providing a desired network service. So network service can be can be HDFS, it can be MapRed, it can be Yarn, it can be Hive, it can be Impala, it can be anything. Okay, and it uh, Carbos involves a third party which is called Key Distribution Center, KDC. So just giving an overview. Cadmus was started in the 1980s. It was developed in 1980s by MIT, and it is easy for administrators to manage uh, these words by storing them centrally. So, talk about this: how actually it performs all this, uh, you know, authentication and authorization for the uh, users. So, Cadmus is actually based upon the secret key distribution model. It's all keys. You don't need to really provide the username and passwords. For accessing your Hadoop cluster and for uh, uh, accessing the Hadoop services. So, how it is actually being done? Now, this is basically based upon three things, as I just said: client server, which is which can be a Hadoop server, and a key distribution center, which contains two other components called authentication server and ticket granting server. Okay. So, let us understand the you know. Uh, about how it is being done, how, how when we access the Hadoop cluster, how uh, the client uh, tries to uh, run these services in uh, using the cameras. So the client is a software that, that desires the access to a service. Okay, as I just said, client wants access the Hadoop distributed file system. Client wants to submit a yarn job. Client wants to uh, access the hive. Okay, so we all know. It can be easily done by using the command Hadoop FS. Okay, so Hadoop FS command is one example of a client which can be on the client side. It can be on the name node. It can be anywhere. Okay, that uh, edge node or gateway server. It, you can see it anywhere. Okay, now this is the the client wishes to let's say. Okay, so when we run the Hadoop service, you all know. It first reaches to name node, or if you are if you are trying to submit the job, it will go to the service manager or the job prep. Okay, whatever the version you are using. Now, the Carbros D, uh, distribution center, which is KDC, key distribution center, it authenticates and authorizes a client. Okay, now KDC. It is neither a part of uh, Hadoop, okay, nor it is being provided by the Hadoop cluster. So most of the Linux distributions they automatically comes with the MIT Kerberos KDC means developed by MIT Kerberos Key Distribution. I mean there are there are different versions of Kerberos as well, 
Okay, I don't know if you have heard about the Hamdel Cadros. Okay, that is also there. There is a MIT Cadro. So most of the Linuxes come with the MIT Cadro. Now, Kerberos is a standard network secure protocol. Okay, so which is, I mean, the current version of this is version 5. And services which are protected by Kerberos don't directly authenticate the client. Okay, so how the, let, let's understand a bit about the Kerberos concepts as well. So, passwords in Kerberos, they are not sent across the network. Okay, instead of that, pa uh, passwords used to compute encryption keys. Okay, so Kerberos protocol basically used encryption extensively during the authentication and authorizations. Okay, now for bringing a Kerberos cluster, you need to have another important thing which is called NTP. Okay, network time protocol server. This is this makes sure. I mean, you need to make sure while running the Kerberos server that. Uh, it synchronizes the clock, clock of uh, Linux servers. Okay. Second thing to work Kerberos correctly, you need to have DNS as well. Okay, with the reverse lookup. Okay, forward and reverse loop with it. Okay. Now there are three important terms of Kerberos. One is called VMs. Second is called principal, and third is called key tab file. Okay, so let us understand these three very important terms. Now, what is VM is a group of machines which is part participating in the Kerberos network. So you can you can take it like as a DNS name. Okay, so for example, I am running a VM cluster.com. So in the cluster.com, I'll be having like name node dot cluster dot com, job tracker dot cluster dot com. Let's say resource manager dot cluster dot com data node dot cluster dot com etc okay it can be fine so that's your rear okay after that you have a principle what is principle principle is the unique identity which can be authenticated by Kerberos okay unique identity means it can be user Username, it can be service name, uh, it can be the, I mean, it can be anything in the cluster. Okay, but generally it is the username and service name. Okay, so let's pick Rahul. Okay, it can be Ashish. Okay, these are the two clients who wants to access HDFS, uh, MapRed, and uh, let's say. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So these are the three services. These two guys wants to uh, access. So these all five guys are called as principals. Okay. Then you have got the key file. A key tab key uh, is a file which stores the Kerberos principles and associated keys. Okay. Stores the uh, Kerberos principles means it stores the username services and the associated keys okay. so this key tab files basically allows a user to access the uh, class means to access the service without sending any password okay without using any password itself so that's that's the benefit of this key tab file so whenever you run the Kerberos Okay, you, you will always have these key tab files automatically created. I mean, you need to create them certainly, but as a as an administrator, uh, you need to create it. And as a user, you don't need to really uh, do anything apart from authenticating using this key tab file. Okay, so I said a couple of things here. Kerberos Key Distribution Center, uh, it has got authentication server, decrypting server, client tries to do some activities here. Uh, we'll, we'll be understanding what these activities are okay so till here guys if you have any questions please drop in the questions window okay now apart from it let's let's understand the internals of uh, of 
Carlos here. Okay. So in the Carlos, okay, there are three things. Okay. Key, D, key client, and server. Okay. So first of all, let us understand how the uh, messages are exchanged using these three things. Okay. So first of all, client. Okay, from here it will be easy to understand. So client will first send a ticket, granting ticket, or an authorization ticket, uh, authentication ticket to authentication server. Okay. So it will first send a ticket, uh, ticket granting ticket to the authentication server. This authentication server is is part of EDC. Okay, Kerberos Key Distribution Center. What it contains? It contains the database. Okay, that has got the principle of the client. Okay, whether this authentication server has got the principle of client or not. So, authentication server will check the database to authenticate the client. Okay, now this authentication server, I mean this KDC also can be in the active directory okay i mean the today's uh, in today's world today's uh, modern world okay uh, authentication sorry key distribution center is the part of uh, of active directory or which you call the ldap ldap server okay so if the user is valid if the client is valid the authentication server will send the ticket granting ticket to the client Okay, it's it, these all these all things are encrypted, so they are encrypted by the session key. So, authentic server will send the ticket granting ticket to the client that okay, you are fine. I'm I'm fine with you. You are successful. You can do the activity. So, client, what it will do? It will again go to the ticket granting server. I mean, it will now go to the ticket granting server with that TGT ticket granting ticket. So, with this. Client will go to the ticket granting server and it will request a service ticket. So service ticket means I want to use the HDFS. So I need the HDFS ticket. So I am providing you my ticket granting ticket means I am authorized. I am already being authenticated here. Okay, I am authenticated here. Please give me a service ticket uh, which validates me that uh, that I can access this service. So granting server now understand okay this this guy is fine okay let's uh, understand let's try, uh, let let me check whether he's very whether the client is permitted to use the requested service or not okay so if if it, he's uh, uh, if he's uh, fine if he is uh, authorized to use the service client TGS ticket granting server will send the service ticket to the client okay. So this service ticket is being again uh, encrypted with the uh, session key too, and it understands that okay, this client is very much authenticated now. This client is uh, authorized to access the HDFS service. Let's let's give this uh, ticket itself. Now client can use the this service, so service can validate the client with the information from the service ticket. So after that, the client will go to the Hadoop cluster. Okay. So client will go to the Hadoop cluster with the service ticket. So this Hadoop cluster certainly has got some services running. Which services? HDFS service, Android service, Iran service. So client will present present its uh, uh, authentic uh, service ticket to the server, and because server knows now that uh, yeah this client is authorized, so server will respond to it, respond with encrypted timestamp, which basically you can say. Uh, Client is able to use the desired network service after authorization. So this is the whole scenario when you are using the uh, you know Rose cluster, and advantages are here like you don't send really the passwords over the network. Okay. Uh, passwords and secret keys they are all only known to your key distribution center and the principals. And can ports passwords or secret keys to be stored in a centralized credential store that is LDAP compliant. But but this depends. I mean, some sometimes you don't really need use the LDAP servers. Like I am not using LDAP server here. I'm just using the key distribution center. Okay. 
So let us understand how you can actually this kind of scenario. Okay. So very very interesting actually. Okay. Let's let's try to understand. So here I am using the key distribution center. Okay. Now this key distribution center has been created with the help of this file called krb5.com. Okay. Now before that, I want to uh, just set some expectation here that these are the, uh, let's say, uh, RPMs I have. I'm using. I'm not sure what is going on. Anyways, let let us understand how how the key DC we need to build. Okay. First of all. I built this uh, whole key, key distribution center with the help of this fiber form. Now this is this is very important file. Okay, here you will see this real. Okay, now this real, as I just said, okay, is is the uh, domain name. You can say now it's it's actually a way of understanding that this is a domain name. Okay, actually it is not a domain name. So this real, uh, my all servers are running in this real. Let's say, okay. So this is my key distribution center, which is the name of uh, IP address of this particular server. Okay, and in this KDC, okay, I am saying this is my admin server on on which the KDC will run, and in this KDC, I am having the all the principles located. Okay, so there are three things now. Not very important to understand. There are three three important things, three programs of Kerberos. Okay. One is called K init, which is a program to request the ticket value ticket from cache. Another is called K list, which is which is going to use to I mean to uh, see your current tickets. And third is called K destroy. These are the main programs I'm I'm telling you to explicitly delete your tickets. Okay. However, they are going to certainly expire after several hours, but these three programs we generally use to uh, access our key uh, to uh, access the KDC, okay, or to request for the ticket. Okay, so let us understand how we can uh, enable this thing. So to see what all principles I have created. Now I've just said principles. So principles either the username or the principal name. So if I do a k admin dot local, you can see authenticating as principal. So how it has authenticated me because I have already mentioned this into the Kerberos into my kdc dot on file and this is the ACL file. Okay, it contains my. Uh, it says. Every everyone can access the cluster. Now this this is not a part of Hadoop cluster, guys. And second thing, you will not be authorized to use this this particular KDC. I mean, generally it is with always it is always with the Active Directory team. Okay, but yes, this is this is all interest. You should have good understanding of this to build this kind of a Kerberos cluster. So here I'm running these uh, KDC server. Now as soon as I I authorized. To use this KDC, I have created some principles. So I'll show you also later on how to create the principles. But just with the with the help of command list prints prints, I can see uh, you can see I have created one user Linux at the rate cluster dot com. I've created a service principle called HDF at the rate HDFS slash Hadoop dot cluster dot com at the rate cluster dot com. HTTP slash Hadoop dot cluster dot com at the rate cluster dot com. So, couple of services, service principles I have created. Now, as to create these principles, okay, you will be creating the key tab files. I'll show you also. Just give me some time. I will, I will go to show you how to create the key tabs and principles. But I have created these principles and I have used them into the Hadoop cluster. So, where I'm using. So, after that, I'm done. I have kept these key tab files here in the. Hadoop etc directory, which is the Hadoop 2 cluster. So I'm just trying to show you HDFS encryption here. How it is done with the help of uh, Kerberos. Okay. Now let me tail some logs here.
Okay. Now this is my uh, uh, Kitab files, and in the Hadoop uh, core side, okay, I have enabled the authentication uh, and authorization properties. Okay. In the HDFS side, I have also explained like what all things you you need to do to. I mean, I've told the Hadoop tester that these all are the access, I mean, you need to use these key tab files, principal names, okay. So it's all static, okay, you don't need to really change it and nobody changes this as well. Uh, these things will be all static as this is all in the configurations, okay. So I provided that configurations as well to the Hadoop cluster. Now, if I use the command K list, okay, you can say no credentials cache found, okay, means there is no I don't have any credentials, so if I run the command, so first of all, let me start the uh, name mode. Before starting the name node also, let me show you the logs in which we'll get all the data. Uh, okay, so if I start the name node, okay, it's just gonna start uh, give lot of lot of kind of the back end, the back end logs. Okay, so you can see, okay, now, uh, let me show you. Okay, so application tokens are there. Uh, this file as I'm not able to find. Okay, so it has started using this Cabros library. Okay, I'm not able to right now, so let's let's forget about it. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, Let's let's run some data node as well quickly. Okay, so if I run the data node, it's going to start the data node as well. Yeah, so here we get some logs as well quickly. So with this, you guys get the idea. Now, if you see the security information, okay. So logging successful for user HDFS means for data node, this is it, it's the HDFS user, okay, which are which are created in the Cabros cluster means KDC, okay. So how it, it got information because here on, on the on the on the well, I have got the krb5.com. So this krb5.conf is the same for for this client as well. Means for KDC Hadoop cluster is it all the Hadoop cluster nodes are clients for KDC. So this krb5.conf is same across the KDC and Hadoop cluster. Okay. So from this guy, from this carefile.com, gets the idea that okay, this is DC. Now I've got the my my nodes are running, means data nodes and name nodes are running, so I can I can put some data there. But if I run the command, let's say fs dfs ls. Okay. Okay. So I got the exception here. You can see what is the exception here. Uh, mechanism fail, fail to find any Carlos TGT means it doesn't have any ticket granting ticket right now. Okay, so that's that's what we just uh, studied that it should first be TGT, it should get the um, uh, then then it will be authorized to use the service, right? So caused by this exception means uh, it's not really authorized to use the HDFS service. So what we need to do, what should we do? Uh, get it authorized. We should run the k init command. Time. 
So you can see klist putting a k init hyphen kt command. And I'm going to use the same key tab file. Okay. Sorry. If I do a k list hyphen ekt, you can see it has got some principles over here. That's interesting. Right? So it has got some principles over here, which means now it is if, if I do a key in it using this particular file, I'll be authorized to the uh, service. So if I do a key in it, this is all syntactual, right? So uh, there's no uh, I mean hard and fast tool or something. I mean this is always a just need to run this need to be uh, complying with this syntax. So if I run this particular command, at the back end it is going to give me some credentials over here. You can see. You can see it has tried for the HDFS credentials. Okay, it is trying the HDFS credentials. Additional pre-authentication requires. It is trying to give the authorization using the authentication server, AS, as we have just studied. Okay, so ticket, it's going to provide you the ticket. Okay, now as soon as the ticket is being given, as you can see in the logs, uh, uh, ticket has given here with the session key encrypted. You can see this is the session and ticket has been granting here by the cluster. So that's the ticket has been issued over here. You can see the issue as well. Okay, so now if I go to the uh, my Hadoop cluster, okay. So HDFS doesn't have really the permissions uh, right now. Okay, it, it's still authenticating the user over here. Uh, but you can see now it has authenticated user. So how 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 can I find out whether the user is authenticated or not? How could we find out that? If I run the command k list, okay, you can see I have got a default principle over here. Which means it is telling that okay, this this particular user is now authorized to use the service, which is HDFS service, and it has also given me ticket. So this is the ticket name, uh, which which is actually after I mean which is uh, going to expire after some time. Yes, we do have some uh, and minutes plan for it. Okay, so how can at uh, what time we should be renewed and all those stuff. But this guy is authorized to use the service. If I run the command HDFS DFS hyphen ls command. Wow, so you you can use the service now. So he, he can actually create the directory. So if I do uh, mkdir slash input, I'm authorized to use the use the service right now. Makes sense, guys. I believe uh, this all makes sense to you. So guys, uh, uh, am, am I audible here? Can you all hear me? Okay, fine. So please drop your questions, okay, in in the chat window or discussions window, guys. There are no problems. So. This is this is a default thing, okay? So I have created for you guys now, uh, just to showcase here. Okay, so now now let's say uh, again, uh, you know, one one important thing, okay? So uh, let's say there's a user Rahul, okay? So now he to access the cluster, okay? So Similarly, I mean, for the client side as well, what you can do is you can easily create the client side, uh, you know, users itself. Okay, you can map those users. You can create the principles. So just to showcase, like how to create the principles as well. Quickly, let me show you, guys. Okay, uh, for the uh, new users, let's say it's a simple add twink, which is principles. 
a random key and you are providing a, a new principal name so let's say this is my real name so I did a prince here and I can use list prince command you can see Rahul has been added over here okay okay and now uh, I want to get the key tab file for that. so xst hyphen no random key with the key tab let's say his name is Rahul dot key tab I'm creating this this file Rahul dot key tab and this is the principle he'll use okay so you can see now we have got a Rahul dot key tab here so I just need to copy this key tab to my to a very secure place in the Hadoop cluster. Uh, so let's say So if I miss uh, key tab in the Hadoop cluster now for Rahul and that's the key tab. So what I need to do here, uh, if you see this is with root right now, okay, so I just need to change the ownership first. Okay, and perform it, uh, change more. Okay, so I need to change the uh, permissions as well for this key tab, 400. Okay. So that's all I need to do here, and now this guy Rahul can also access the Hadoop cluster. Okay, so that's that's very simple things to do, guys. Okay, for uh, I mean after you have understood what all things you need to do for building the you know, the Hadoop cluster. Okay, okay. Uh, now now this is one thing. Okay, this is Cabros. Okay. Now let's understand more advanced thing. Okay, uh, I'll not say more advanced, but I'll say uh, more important. Okay. So when you are having, you have specified all the details, okay? Uh, we have provided all the security as well. But there are use cases, right, in which, let's say, uh, you you have, just, just to show you, you have uh, created this directory slash input, okay, on which the this guy HS is the owner and Hadoop is a group. Now I want to give one more, access to one more user to this directory okay how to do that or I want to give uh, the access to uh, the whole one more whole group to, to this particular directory and the data inside it okay or let's say if I create uh, a directory okay uh, one and let's say direct two I want to give the specific privileges to each directory so a lot of things I need to do, a lot of things I need to remember as well. Okay, so what what all things I, I need to do here? So basically this kind of activity, uh, the authorization has, uh, this authorization model in HDFS, which are called as access control list, HDFS permissions with the access control list. So HDFS has supported a permission model equivalent to traditional Unix permissions, which are used for owners, groups, and others. And three types of permissions are there, heat, write, execute. So all these three types are supported in in access controls. Okay, so let's understand which is what is ACL all about. Okay, so ACL uh, extends the HDFS features model, and it, it supports more granular file access based uh, permission uh, on the combination with the combinations of users and group. Okay, so for for enabling the ACS need to enable one property, and for that, uh, you know, the other things can, is a convert. So, just to showcase here, in the uh, HDFS site.xml, need to enable this property called dfs.namenode.acls.enabled is equal to true. So, as soon as you do this uh, particular, you enable this particular property. Uh, you just need to play around with the ACLs. Okay, so let us understand a couple of options in the ACLs, and then we'll finish up the session with the 
uh, uh, Hadoop admin responsibilities and our Hadoop uh, uh, course itself. So there are a couple of uh, things. You can check out ACS. If you want to display all the ACS related to a particular directory, you need to use the command get FACL. And if you want to set the ACLs for any directory, you need to use set FACL commands. Okay. And after you set the ACLs, you will automatically see one plus sign, plus character appended to the end of the name of the pixel. Okay. So let us understand. Uh, let's let's see a small demonstration of how you can. Uh, enable the ACLs, how you can actually apply the ACLs to a uh, directory itself. Okay, so uh, let's say you want to set the ACL for a Hadoop cluster. So first first of all, let's see what ACLs are set up uh, for this input directory. So you can see, this is my uh, direct here. That's the honor is the HDFS. Group is the Hadoop, and these are permissions by default given to this directory. Okay. Now let's say I want to provide the I want the FACL. Okay. In which I want to say, let's give user Rahul read permissions to this directory. Okay. Sorry. Now let's. It's DFS, DFS hyphen set FACL hyphen. Oops. So now it's the correct command. So hyphen M will actually help to uh, set the, modify the ACL, and new entries are added to the ACL, and existing entries are going to get remained. So if I now use the get FACL command, it's going to show me that now the user Rahul is also having the read permission. Okay, so now if, I, if Rahul tries to uh, access the cluster, he can read the data, but he cannot write or execute the data lying into this slash input directory. Okay, so that's similar. If I, if I want to let's say remove the user Rahul, okay, so I can just use the hyphen x command, and uh, this will sorry. This, the word will be done by hyphen x and the directory. So now it's, it's fine. Yeah. With the hyphen x command, it is going to tell that okay, this user is now revoked. Okay, so that's that's the advantage, guys. When when you are uh, sending uh, permissions. Okay. Now another important thing is, let's say, what you want to do? You want to say uh, I am creating one directory here, uh, and all the all the directories uh, inside this directory should get the uh, recursive permissions according to this uh, directory itself. Okay, so I'm trying to say, let's say I've got a test directory, and all the directories under this directory should get the default permissions of slash test. So I'll just do a set FSCL. I'll say hyphen m. I'm going to set the multiple permissions. So I'll, I'll use hyphen hyphen set. So I'll say user Rahul should get the read write. I'll say uh, group developers should get the uh, read write execute. I'll say others should get the sorry. Uh, others should get the only execute permission okay so I'm going to set this to this particular guy uh, seeing some problem with the command user Rahul read write this is fine then I have got group which is developers execute and then other will be file this problem set So let's do it with the hyphen hyphen m. Oh, okay. That was the problem. So it's the yeah. 
others. Okay, it will work fine. Yep. So user group and other entries required. I think I've provided the other entries. Let's see the password. Right, so uh, just a sec, Maras, let me um, rectify this error. What's going on? We drag execute, user is fine. What's really going wrong? Let me check. User Rahul, we drive group is being driven like this. Uh, Yeah, sure, Mara. So, okay, just, just Mara. Okay, just, just a sec. Not sure what is going wrong with this. Uh, need to take a look. Anyways, uh, let's start with the minus M right now. And right. So now, if this guy has got permissions on this directory. So inside whatever I'm going to create here, this group dev will get the same permission. So this is how we uh, set up the permissions for any directories as well in HDFS. Okay, whatever directories you're creating. Now there's another question asked from me, Mr. By Mr. Manas here, that uh, uh, how do you set the security in Hadoop? Uh, so to set the data security, guys. Okay. What you need to do, uh, you need to do two things. Okay, let me show you what you can do here. Okay, there are two files called SSL server and SSL client. Okay, so you need to enable the SSL so that whatever data is coming from outside or it is it's going on wires uh, via HTTP that can be encrypted and second thing what you can do is you can encrypt the data which is lying inside the HDFS okay and for that we do have called the uh, encryption zones okay uh, I, don't, I think so it's, it's not in 2.6 here okay so you need to provide the encryption zones I don't know if you've heard about the Gazan okay Gazang encrypt are uh, coming from cloud and these are basically required for security uh, for data at, at rest. Okay, encryption for, for data at rest. Okay, read about encrypt uh, in cloud era and, and, and you can see these are key trustee server. Key trustee server. So these are the, some of the uh, terms here. Okay, let me write these things for you, so you can read about it. Multi trusty server, um, Gazang, and encrypt. Okay, so you need to encrypt your data lying inside the HDFS itself. Okay, so for this thing, guys, I mean uh, that's all for my demo side. Okay, so just uh, to give an overview. Uh, for the major Hadoop administration responsibilities, you need to, um, as a Hadoop infrastructure administrator, you need to be responsible. You are responsible for implementation and ongoing administration, aligning with the systems engineering team, pose and deploy new hardware and software environments. You need to do all the integrations with the different uh, components. You need to integrate them. You need to do the performance tuning. You need to manage your file system. You need to monitor it. You need to collaborate with the application system, application teams as well. To, for the updates, patches, version updates, etc. Uh, so that's why I just said uh, for from Edureka. I mean, if you want to learn all these kind of things, guys, very tough, I'll say, from uh, Hadoop's perspective, uh, we do provide all these knowledge in our code. And how it works is 
uh, it's all live online classes. I mean, I don't do any theoretical knowledge in the Hadoop clusters. I do provide, like to provide 70 to 80 percent of the knowledge online. I mean, to say uh, on the virtual machines. We do record all the class recordings uh, in the LMS, and then we we do have post class support, module wise quizzes, project works, verifiable certificate from Edureka after the successful uh, completion of this course. Uh, uh, and these are all our course topics. So, Hadoop cluster administration, Hadoop architecture and cluster setup, uh, planning, maintenance, high availability, quorum manager, federation, security, Hadoop ecosystem components, Uzi, H catalog, Hive, and then finally the Hadoop implementation as well with the Cloud Era Hadoop cluster. So, we do all those things mostly via the virtual machines. And I do I do provide the support as well during the classes. If you need any help, I do support uh, you know building the Hadoop clusters in in your lab or desktops, whatever you have. So if you have any questions, guys, you want to ask, please go ahead. Otherwise, that's all from my side for today's session. I've liked it. I hope you understand what it's all about. And thank you so much for joining in. So please post your queries. Please don't forget to provide your feedbacks as well. That will help us to improve our services, our webinars as well. And thank you so much. Okay, so very good night. Cheers. Bye.